on World News Tonight. Heat alert. All-time record smashed in Europe as London is sweltering in its hottest day on record. Iran mission. Putin took part in a high-stakes meeting in Iran and plans to keep Ukraine at a grip. Sky-high inflation. Countries around the world fight inflation as prices rise faster. Tonight, more about the collective effort. And it's a cool escape. Paris and Prague offers refuge in an icy room to tackle the heat. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. Now amid a historic and deadly heat wave that has been scorching around Western Europe, record-breaking temperatures are also being seen across the United Kingdom. Emergency services are busy dealing with a number of fires in the capital, while transport infrastructure is being damaged and people are being warned of the effects that the heat can have on their health as the death toll in Western Europe continues to rise. And experts say that it looks like the blistering conditions may be something people will need to get used to. Britain recorded its highest ever temperature on Tuesday as fires raged across its capital. Homes were destroyed in Wennington, East London, as temperatures pushed 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Flames tore across neighboring fields surrounding the city center and prompting London's fire brigade to declare a major incident. London's mayor, Sadiq Khan, voiced concern over the long delays it took fire brigades to respond to calls. Some of the fires today have required more than 30 fire engines. Some have required 20 fire engines. Some have required 15 fire engines. It's simply not possible for uh, the London Fire Brigade to respond to all of these fires uh, if they continue at this pace. The UK has been put on a state of national emergency over the unprecedented heat. The Met Office said the provisional record was recorded at 12.50 p.m. local time at London's Heathrow Airport, surpassing the previous record of 101.6 degrees Fahrenheit recorded in 2019. With the mercury still rising, train routes were cancelled, busy city centres appeared quiet, and zoos struggled to keep their animals cool. Other European countries are also still battling the heat wave, which has now risen from the south and settled over the west of the continent. The National Weather Service in France as well confirmed record high temperatures were registered in 64 different areas as the heat wave peaked in the country. In the northern parts of the Paris region, locals have been cooling off in outdoor pools. Revelers have taken to La Conneuve Beach. The region reached highs of 40 degrees on Tuesday. Adults have been watching over children enjoying themselves. While some are having fun, others are working. On construction sites, workers' tasks are being made even more difficult by the high temperatures. This independent construction worker has no choice but to work alone, regardless of the heat. Another part of the population vulnerable to the heat are small children. This crash in the town of Rouen was fitted with air conditioning. The orange heatwave warning was maintained throughout Tuesday in 70 French departments, as storms are expected across the country from north to south. The Chinese foreign minister made a daring comment saying that China will take resolute and strong measures should the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, proceed with the reports planning to visit Taiwan. China's government on Tuesday warned that it would take forceful measures if U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan. This comes after a report by the Financial Times that said Pelosi planned to travel to the Chinese-claimed island next month. Speaking in Beijing, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Li Zhen said any visit by Pelosi would, quote, seriously undermine China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. If the U.S. side is bent on having its own way, China will take resolute and forceful measures to firmly defend national sovereignty and territorial integrity. All consequences resulting from this must be entirely the responsibility of the United States side. The Democratic leader's visit to Taiwan had been postponed from April after she tested positive for COVID-19 
At the time, China said such a visit would severely affect Chinese-U.S. relations. The White House had expressed concern about the Pelosi trip, the Financial Times said, citing three people familiar with the situation. When asked about the report, Pelosi's deputy chief of staff said, quote, We do not confirm or deny international travel in advance due to long-standing security protocols. Meanwhile, Taiwan faces mounting pressure from China, which considers the democratically governed island its own territory. The issue is a constant point of tension between Beijing and Washington. Taiwan, however, has been heartened by continued support offered by U.S. President Joe Biden's administration, which has repeatedly spoken of its rock-solid commitment to the island. Pelosi, a longtime critic of China, reportedly would be the highest-ranking American lawmaker to visit Taiwan since her predecessor as Speaker Newt Gingrich traveled there 25 years ago. According to the FT report, citing people familiar with the matter, the House Speaker and her delegation will also visit Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, and Singapore, and spend time in Hawaii at the headquarters of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. Russian President Vladimir Putin met Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali and Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan in Tehran, stressing closer ties in the face of Western pressure over the war in Ukraine. In his first trip outside the former Soviet Union since Moscow's February 24th invasion of Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday had talks with Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei in Iran. He also had a face-to-face -face meeting with Turkey's Tayyip Erdogan in Tehran to discuss Ukraine's Black Sea grain exports and the conflict in northern Syria. Putin's trip comes just days after U.S. President Joe Biden visited Israel and Saudi Arabia, sending a strong message to the West about Moscow's plans to forge closer strategic ties with Iran, China and India in the face of Western sanctions. In another meeting, Putin, Erdogan and Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi weighed efforts to reduce violence in Syria. Speaking at the end of those talks, Putin said the three presidents were committed to efforts to normalize the situation there after a decade of conflict. We agreed with our Iranian and Turkish colleagues to continue the practice of holding regular international expert consultations on Syria under the auspices of the Astana format. Along with the delegations of our three countries, Syrian parties take part in these consultations. The government and the opposition, the observer states, Jordan, Iraq and Lebanon, as well as the UN representatives. Putin, who turns 70 this year, has made few foreign trips in recent years due to the COVID-19 pandemic and then the Ukraine crisis. His last trip beyond the former Soviet Union was to China in February. For the first time in more than a decade, the European Central Bank is also looking to raise its key interest rates. Amid soaring inflation, the European Central Bank is set to raise its key interest rates for the first time in 11 years. The decision, which is set to be made later this week, was previously hinted at by the ECB chief last month. As the governing council concluded that the conditions underlying our forward guidance have been satisfied, we intend to raise the key ECB interest rates by 25 basis points at our July monetary policy meeting. However, Lagarde said later that a quarter point hike would be the intention, while cautioning that no decision had been made. Market experts also believe that current economic conditions show that a 25 basis point would not be enough to tame inflation, and instead, a so-called big step should be made. The ECB should do more than markets expect. The market expects 0.25 percentage points, whereas the ECB should make it 0.5 percent. The message must be, we have understood that there is inflation and that we must do something against it. I'm afraid it's only going to be 0.25 points. Despite calls for a 50 basis point rate hike by many market experts, ECB officials dismiss the prospect of starting interest rate hikes with a half point move this week. However, others say that with inflation continuing to surge and the euro continuously falling against the U.S. dollar, another rate hike later this year would be inevitable. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news.
Welcome back to World News Tonight. As the ECB is planning for rising interest rates, the international community currently has a common goal countering soaring inflation. And tonight we learn more about the collective action. Countries around the world are fighting to dial back sky-high prices. New numbers from the U.S. last week showed inflation is rising faster than at any point in the past four decades. And with Federal Reserve officials debating over a historic one percentage point rate hike at next week's meeting, many emerging and advanced markets are further tightening their monetary policies. Just last Friday, top financial officials from the group of 20 nations discussed a surging inflation worldwide and increases in crude oil prices amid the war in Ukraine. We are all facing a very difficult situation to manage as a finance ministers as well as central bank governor. We are witnessing an alarming increase in risk to food security as the impact of the war in Ukraine and sanctions as well as export restriction. These are all has driven food prices to record level. The annual inflation rate in European Union's 27 member countries also surged to a record high of 9.6 percent this month. The EU statistics agency says inflation is at its highest level since records for the euro began in 1997. Canada's inflation rate in May also hit a near four-decade high at 7.7 percent. South Korea was no exception. Last week, the Bank of Korea raised its policy interest rate by an unprecedented half point in an attempt to lower inflation from 24-year highs. Everybody government tries to avoid inflation and tries to avoid recession, but we're going to have recession. The Spanish government, meanwhile, said on Tuesday that it's going to impose temporary taxes on banks and energy firms to cover the cost of state measures put in place to help its people amid soaring inflation. Over in Tokyo, South Korea's foreign minister met with Japan's prime minister, Kumio Kishida. Park Jin reportedly expressed President Yoon's strong determination to improve bilateral relations. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Gishida is a reliable partner, according to South Korean President Yoon Seok-yeol, with whom he can work together to develop friendly and cooperative bilateral relations. SARS top diplomat Park Jin delivered this message from the South Korean leader to his Japanese counterpart on Tuesday. He said Gishida listened carefully to Yoon's message and voiced hope of continuing to have good talks with him like they did at the NATO summit in Spain. In the message, Yoon also expressed his condolences over the death of Japan's late former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Topping the talks between Park and Gishida were pending issues between the two countries, namely the issue of compensation for the Koreans that Japan subjected to wartime forced labor. Buck pledged to what he could do so that there are desirable solutions before the assets of related Japanese firms are liquidated. Regarding the 2015 agreement on the issue of the Korean women subjected to sexual slavery by Japan, the so-called comfort women, he said the South Korean government regards the deal as official and expects the issue to be resolved in accordance with the spirit of the agreement. According to the South Korean foreign minister, Kishida said nothing but listen. Though no details are settled yet, Bak said he is hopeful that there will be a summit between the leaders of the two countries once there have been solutions outlined to various issues. Also on Tuesday, Bak and Gishida agreed to closely cooperate on revitalizing people-to-people -people exchanges, like the recent resumption of flights between Gimpo and Haneda airports. Now Twitter will get an October trial in its legal fight to hold Elon Musk to his $44 billion takeover after a Delaware judge said the social media company deserved a quick resolution of the deal's uncertainty. Elon Musk's effort to delay Twitter's trial against him flopped in court on Tuesday. A Delaware judge ruled Twitter's lawsuit seeking to hold Musk to his $44 billion takeover will go to trial in October. Mitchell Eppner is a litigator specializing in white-collar crime. This is a major victory for Twitter and a major defeat for Elon Musk, who was seeking to have the trial delayed until next year in February. Um, Twitter is trying to get the contract that Elon Musk signed enforced 
and require him to buy the entire company for $44 billion. Um, and today's ruling is in line with Twitter's aims and directly contrary to Musk's. Musk was pushing for a delay to allow for an extensive investigation into his claims that Twitter has misrepresented the number of fake or spam accounts. The company says the issue is a distraction and an excuse to walk away from the deal. On this issue, Epner says Musk shot himself in the foot when he waived any due diligence in his bid for the social media giant. He has left himself with virtually no defenses here. He is the dog who caught the car he was chasing. The judge said on Tuesday that the company deserved a swift decision on its claims, saying, quote, the reality is delay threatens irreparable harm to the sellers, a.k.a. Twitter. She asked the parties to work out the schedule for the trial, which she set at five days. There's a strong likelihood that Elon Musk will be required to come up with $44 billion to buy Twitter. If he decides that he really wants not to buy Twitter, he's going to have to come up with some amount of money, likely far in excess of a billion dollars, in order to get Twitter to release him from that obligation. An attorney for Musk did not respond to a request for comment. Netflix saw a drop in its global subscribers, but the news wasn't all bad. The streaming service lost a nearly million subscribers in the last three months. Netflix said it lost 970,000 subscribers last quarter, which is actually good news, considering that the world's largest streaming service shocked Wall Street in April when it said it expected to lose 2 million. Netflix not only avoided that worst-case scenario, but on Tuesday also predicted it would return to customer growth this quarter. As a result, Netflix shares, which have fallen roughly 67 percent due to customer growth concerns, rose in after-hours trading. Few people get my clients' attention the way you have. After years of red-hot growth, the company's fortunes changed as rivals including Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery and Apple invested heavily in their own streaming services. In a letter to shareholders on Tuesday, Netflix attributed its slowdown to a variety of factors including password sharing, competition and a sluggish economy. It said it plans to crack down on password sharing and will also launch a less expensive ad-supported option next year as a way to lure more subscribers. Netflix is also looking to build on the success of mega-hit Stranger Things, which has inspired merchandise, and now a spin-off series and a stage play are in the works. Netflix said it's planning to give at least a dozen series and films the Stranger Things treatment. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. British consumer price inflation surged again in June to hit an annual rate of 9.4%, the highest rate since early 1982. Official figures underline the chances of a bigger-than-usual Bank of England interest rates hike next month. The Chinese mainland reported 108 new locally transmitted COVID-19 cases and 40 new imported ones. No new deaths from COVID-19 or additional suspected cases were reported on the day. The Ministry of Economy and Finance has expressed concerns over an economic slowdown in South Korea for the second consecutive month amid worsening external economic conditions. Cash-strapped Cuba delivered bad news of residents this week that there was no end to sight in blackouts disrupting their lives and the economy. In US, 17 members of Congress, all of them Democrats, were arrested during an abortion rights protest in front of the Supreme Court. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you missed watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We are leaving you tonight. Let's take a look at how bars in Paris are offering a cool place of refuge amid soaring temperatures. Stay safe and have a good night.